Just to be clear, all of these weapons that we are dealing with are empty, unloaded. We have already checked before starting to film this video. I just wanted to make that. Out. What is going on guys, Andy Gabs back for another vlog. And today we are actually gonna be heading to my buddy Christopher Torres' house. He owns a really cool company that we're gonna get into later in the video. Um, so if you like some pew pews and things like that, stay tuned. I asked you guys in my community section and a lot of people liked it and said that they wanted to see it. So we are gonna get into that, but he does have a bumblebee ball python. Uh, and it hasn't eaten, it's gone on a food strike for a few weeks. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna see if we can get his bumblebee ball python to eat, and then we're gonna get into some really cool stuff. I'll introduce Chris and we're gonna talk about some of the stuff that he does, and uh, he's actually gonna be starting his own YouTube channel too, so we're gonna film some stuff for him and his channel, and we're gonna film some stuff for my channel, which is what the video you guys are watching today is. Uh, so stay tuned, I'm gonna go ahead, get inside. I already got all of my whole little studio set up in his house, um, but I wanted to show you guys the bumblebee ball python first, because because I thought it was really cool, and it hasn't eaten for a few weeks, so I wanna see if we can get it to eat. All right, guys, so this is Bumblebee's enclosure. Bumblebee is a bumblebee ball python who you can kinda of see hiding right in there. So we are gonna take him out, or not take him out, but we are gonna to try to get him to eat now. So we're gonna get him out and get the mouse all defrosted and stuff. Sophia's gonna take out the ball python, and from everything I understand, Sophia takes care of this guy pretty much by herself. Go I got him about last year, um, during the end of the summer, when he was only three years old, but in snakes, for snakes, he's a grown up. I'm gonna assume he's about four years old. I never knew his exact um, birth date. Let's get the mouse defrosted and see if we can get him to eat. You said it's been three weeks since he's eaten, right? Yes. Four, actually, now. Four weeks, all right, let's see if we can get him to eat. All right, guys, so we got the frozen rat right here, and because uh, Bumblebee hasn't eaten in a couple days, I'm actually gonna put a little bit of cut on the back of his neck to kind of get some of the uh, more stinky stuff coming out of him, so hopefully Bumblebee will smell it and go for him. I'm about to do that right now, and then we are going to try to feed Bumblebee. So let's see if Bumblebee wants to take it. Like I said, they said he hasn't eaten about four weeks but you wanna get that really gross part right up close so he can smell it. And then kinda of like almost taunt him with it a little bit, wiggle it around, get him to see it, make it look like it's moving in a way. Sometimes you have to do this for definitely a little bit of time. Sometimes it seems too like you can almost just annoy them enough to the point that they're like, okay, shut up, I'll eat it. <laughs> like sometimes that works. All right, and now for the main part and the whole idea of what this video is gonna be about, me and Chris are setting up right now, and then we're gonna kinda go into who he is, what he does, and where his company came from. And then in the future, we have a couple more really cool videos planned that we will talk about uh, later on in this video. Just give me a few minutes to set up. All right, guys, so as promised, I am here with my buddy Chris from Imperator Arms, and today we're just gonna kinda talk about him, who he is, his origin story, and show you guys some awesome product. And then in the future, we're gonna talk even a little bit more about what these products are, and kind of delve into a little bit more of the technical side of what he does. But for now, Chris, welcome. Thank you for being on and thank you for letting me film in your house. Definitely. Uh, his whole house is set up right now. I have my lights, the backdrop, took everything down from my house and brought it over here. But uh, go ahead, tell me the, the origin story from Emperor, one sec. Imperator. Imperator, sorry. Imperator Arms. So well, I'll back up from there. Okay. Um, so an Imperator, a Roman Imperator, was a title given to a successful general. If you led a campaign in uh, Rome, in let's say in the Gaul or other regions that they were taxing and he was successful, he was given the title Imperator. Now, that was basically a, a bookmarker for when you came back to Rome and you were giving your day in the sun. Gotcha. You were giving your uh, triumph. But what happened was as time went on, people really loved to be called an, an Imperator. So you would be Cassius the Imperator, you'd be Scipio the Imperator. and so they didn't want to give up those titles, so they weren't coming back for their triumphs. I remember reading that in history class and I was always stuck in my head. As far as the arms part, so once you were an Imperator, there was sword makers, you know, helmets, shields, arms. Um, there were some that catered just to Imperators, so they would give them the best of the best product and everybody else got what was left over. So if you were an Imperator armor, you were kind of given this status of, well, I've dealt arms to Caesar, I've dealt arms to, you know, these successful armies. So it gave you a more elevated status. And 
One of the things um, that I'll get into about when I started my company with uh, two Marines um, was that we wanted to build something that would impress upon today's modern warrior. We wanted something that wasn't off the shelf and something that you felt like, wow, I, I would trust this in you know a, a variety of situations. That's kind of how it all got started. Gotcha. And so I know this isn't really my, my channel norm, right? But when me and Chris were talking, I was actually here yesterday uh, and I was looking at buying some product, which we'll get into later. I was like, you know, you should really, we should make a video about this, right? Because you guys know, I've talked about it before. I love weapons. I love fishing. I love anything to do with the outdoors. And I came to his house and it was just like a kid in a candy shop for me. He was showing me all this different stuff and I was like mind blown. And I was like, you know what? We need to make a video about this. So I understand that probably 50% of you, if not more, have no idea what we're talking about when we're talking about uppers, lowers, the Roni system, Glock 17s versus the Glock 19 versus everything else. But I kind of want to make this not really a, a series, so to speak, for my channel, but I want to start to talk about some of this stuff. And as you guys watch, we're going to talk more about what everything is and how it all works together. Um, not as much in this video, but kind of, I guess you could say. So what would you say that you got started with? What is what was your starting point for this business? Well, so building was something that I really didn't initially understand. There was a few companies that were building their own firearms from 80% lowers. And what that means is um, you have a, a receiver to a firearm and as the law states now and laws change, you can build your own firearm at home yep. from what's considered an 80% receiver. The 80% receiver is the part that you actually physically have to uh, either mill out, manipulate, or um, machine to make it functional. So that being said, the first firearm that we started with was the AR platform, which people are um, pretty familiar with. And um, this right here is what's considered an 80% receiver. Now, what can makes this 80% is this uh, inside pocket here has not been milled out. So you would take your uh, trigger and you would pick your hammer and it would go inside this area here. But as you can see, this is solid through and through. So it takes some manipulation with the machine to create a firearm. These raw 80 percenters, we were buying them at wholesale and then um, Chris Brown, dear friend of mine, was actually really good at Cerakoting, which is a painting technique to where you uh, uh, paint the, uh, the uh, aluminum, you bake it and it gives it a harder finish and it's, you know, it's kind of scratch resistant, but you have a rainbow of colors. So that's what kind of set us aside from just the, the raw uh, black metal anodized look. So while we were talking about Cerakoting, I saw this sitting on the other side of the room and I wanted to kind of show you guys what you can actually do with the Cerakoting process. So all of this prior to the Cerakoting process was all black. It looked very similar to what this would look like, right? Just that solid black color, but with the Cerakoting, you can make it literally any color you want. Now, I think we kind of, we touched on the uh, the 80%. Now, what other products do you have? So I see that we have uh, a Glock case right here. We have some different Ronies, a Glock 17. Take me through some of your other products. So, so as we progressed with business, we um, kind of opened up the umbrella to different um, platforms. So like I said, we started on the AR platform, which is the most popular. Yep. And then there's the AR-10, which is a, a higher caliber. It's, it's very similar to the AR-15 platform. And then other companies, I think, um, big companies, saw that this was not just a fad, this is definitely a, a way that Firearms were going to be issued into the future. P80, which makes um, these 80% uh, lowers in the handgun model. And like the ARs, it has 20% of the uh, material that you actually have to machine off. And there's a few uh, holes you have to drill to complete the firearm. And this would be the lower parts kit. I don't know if you can see this here. This is your uh, firing, your trigger mechanism which goes into the lower half of your 80% P80. And so this is another thing. We took that same sort of um, ingenuity with uh, Cerakoting and engraving, and we um, applied that to this platform. So again, um, just like the 80% uh, uh, AR-15s, we shopped around for companies to um, facilitate the uppers, which would be your slide, your barrel mechanism. This is a a company that I contract for here on the West Coast. It's a uh, Rock Slide USA. And this is not a factory piece from Glock. This is actually from Rock Slide. 
They're uh, located in North Carolina and I was introduced to them through a colleague and we've been very successful in doing business. I'm one of, I believe they're only um, accounts here on the west coast as their company is growing because they are smaller but one of the things that attracted us to this particular company was that they have I, what I would call I think above standard engineering to where the slide on the top is RMR cut and what that means is you can fit a, a co-witnessed optic here and I'll show you that in a few moments but that machining alone can run you two to three hundred dollars if on a standard piece and then added, it's got some clever reporting in the front that kind of adds to the function as far as getting rid of some of the weight distribution on this piece. Um, and to give you an idea what that looks like, this is your standard Glock 17. And as you notice, there is no RMR cut here. So to me, this is an upgraded piece, much like you would think of like uh, guys that build hot rods. This is definitely something that is you know, attract um, you know, the custom builders. And that's why we went with this company. And it definitely looks cooler too, which is, again, that's kind of one of the things that we were talking about where it is functionality is a huge portion of, right? You want your weapon to be able to function every time you use it. You want it to go bang when you pull the trigger every single time. But another thing that sets building aside for me and from my perspective at least is the looks of everything, right? There is no doubt in my mind that Almost everyone watching this video is gonna think this piece right here looks better than the standard Glock piece right there. I know you guys can't see them close, but I'll actually do a close-up video now so you can see the difference in between what I'm talking about. But the looks between each is completely different. I think it gives it a much more interesting and appealing look to the weapon itself, which is big for people that wanna build their own stuff because they wanna build it to their specs and their standards. And I think that's a really cool thing with this slide that Chris is offering. So then along with the 80% builds comes, I think like, all the, the extra fun stuff. So um, one of the companies that um, I had met at SHOT Show, and again, I didn't understand what they were trying to do. Yeah. And of course, I, I must, you know, like have like those slow jeans or something because I, I literally didn't understand why somebody would want to do this. And here I am three years later and I, I, I'm in love with what I didn't understand. And so that, that's the uh, CAA Roni. And this is the Israeli made model. And what this is, is it turns your um, Glock 17, 19, 22, 23, 31, 32, and a, a variety of other uh, models of the Glock into, um, I guess for legal reasons, a, a fun machine. Sure. So we'll call it a fun machine. A fun machine. And it's very, very easy to manipulate to slide your factory Glock. Let's take this magazine out. And, and just to be clear, all of these weapons that we are dealing with are empty, unloaded. We have already checked before starting to film this video. I just wanted to make that very clear. So it slides right in here very easily. You hear the click. And this is the Israeli made uh, model, which I, has features on it that I feel like are a little more rugged. And we'll get into that in a later video. And so your firearm is now secured inside of this system and it turns it into a more manageable, I think, shooting platform that is now shoulderable and it's more comfortable for more sustained fire. It has a collapsible feature that helps you stow it away. Um, you can also add uh, optics, a variable of different uh, red dots, pop sights, um, flashlights, just to keep it, you know, in a, I think a compact, urban response sort of firearm yeah is what you want to call it exactly that might be a little long-winded but it sounded fun so yeah and so one thing that I wanted to, to share with you guys and that's kind of the whole reason that the idea for doing these videos came about is essentially exactly what you see right here I'm actually purchasing from Chris and we're gonna show you how to take this kit right here and completely turn it into this uh, it's going to be in a later video. I am applying through California to get a serial number. Um, prior to completing one of these builds in the state of California, you need to obtain a serial number for the firearm. So I am going through that process right now. Once all of that legal and paperwork stuff is done, uh, we're actually going to go through and show you guys how to turn this right here 
into this right here. Uh, I think it's gonna be a really, really cool video and that's kind of what inspired me at least to work with Chris and show everything that he does because one, I love it. I know I have at least a bunch of people on the channel that are enthusiasts and that love to see things like builds and you know how to do stuff and tinker as well as for people that don't even subscribe to the channel that want to see how to do something I think it'll be really cool to have a complete walkthrough I guess of how to take something like this that weighs I don't know maybe pound yeah, if that and turn it into a fully functional and pretty badass weapon system itself uh, so that's one thing that you guys will have coming up in a future video not sure how long it's gonna take um, that completely lies with the state of California and how long it wants to take and how long they want to take to get me a serial number. Um, so it could be a week or it could be six months. <laughs> we, we will see. So now you guys kind of have a rough overview of what Imperator, I said it right this time, right? Got it. Of what Imperator Arms is, who Chris is, what he's all about, what the company is. Uh, and going forward, we're definitely going to do more videos together. This was just kind of the start and the overview of what Imperator Arms is and who Chris is. Uh, so I do hope you guys enjoyed. Chris, thank you for letting me Absolutely. take over your whole entire living room and turn it into my studio. Um, so stay tuned, guys, for future videos. We're going to, like I said, build the whole Roni system, uh, build the Glock 17, do all that fun stuff. And then Chris is actually going to be starting a YouTube channel here pretty soon. So all of the links to everything for Chris is going to be down below in the description as well as the pinned comment. So his Facebook, his Instagram, uh, his YouTube channel, if we get it created in time, uh, which I think we can do prior to this video coming out. And hopefully he'll have a video on there so you guys will have another thing to watch going over some differences between two different weapon systems. Um, so again... Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, turn the notification bell on. We have more reptile related content coming up soon. And I have a huge announcement for you guys uh, that I just figured out last week about where me and Kelsey will be moving to. But you got to stay tuned for that one. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Peace.